Hey, most insurance agents are making mistakes right now on the phone. You may be as well. Stay tuned to this video to make sure that you don't make, make those mistakes anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna go over eight rules for calling insurance leads. These are eight rules that you can use to make sure that you don't make mistakes, to make sure you have success, to make sure that you actually set appointments, okay? Because that's the, that's the goal. If you think about, okay, what is our goal when we are calling insurance leads? I believe it's twofold, okay? A, I believe it's important to keep control of the call. Okay, when you're making calling insurance leads, having control, super valuable. Okay, B, part two, the goal is to obviously set or book appointments if that's what you're focused on. So these eight rules will make sure that you're able to stay in control and it'll help you set more appointments when you call leads. All right, so let's jump right in. The first one is you need to assume that the right person answered the phone. One of the biggest mistakes that I see insurance agents make when they call leads is they say, are you Betty? I'm looking for Betty. Is this Betty? Can I speak to Betty? Instead of saying, instead of saying, hello, Betty, right? It's a much more confident approach. You think about it. Hello, is this Betty or hello, Betty? Which one sounds more confident? Which one's less likely to be lied to? Because we've all done it to where a, a telemarketer's called you and you said, no, you got the wrong number. When in fact, it was actually you, they were asking for you and you should have said it was you, right? However, they ask, they didn't tell, right? Great salespeople tell, they don't ask, okay? So that's rule number one, assume the right person to the phone, okay? Rule number two, say your first name. I don't believe in saying last name, right? It may sound official, but it also sounds stupid because they're not going to remember it. So who freaking cares? All right. So drop the last name. I only want to give them enough information for them to actually make a decision. Too much information. They're not going to remember anyway, right? So I drop last name. I don't ask last name. Okay. Also, I don't say company name. I know that's a little rare, a little odd. I don't say company name because in the past, what I've noticed is when I say this is Cody from Secure Agent Insurance, okay? That'll, that'll give them a chance to interject and say, I don't know who is this, or I don't know who Secure Agent is, or I didn't do this, or who are you, or what'd you say you are again, or who was that again, or um, who is that, or what, you know, why are you calling, right? I don't want them to interject yet. Why? It goes back to keeping control of the call. If you want to be in control, Okay, keep it extremely simple. I say my first name, that's it, right? Hello, Betty. This is Cody. That's it so far, okay? I also, moving to the next piece, rule number three, I also love the phrase, we're getting back to you about your request for the blank, okay? I love the phrase, we're getting back to you. It's simple, it's less, because most, I mean, here, here's an example of a wrong call. Most insurance agents will make a call, they'll say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for Betty, is this Betty? Hey, this is, you know, this is Cody Askins with Secure, and, you know, Agent Insurance. How are you doing today, right? Another mistake, I'll talk about it later, okay? Then, we'll say, you fill out a form to do this, or to buy this, or to talk about this, and then we pause. Instead, we're getting back to you, right? It's not saying, hey, you did this, so we're talking. It's, we're getting back to you. You you requested it, so I'm just simply getting back to you. That's why I love that phrase, we're getting back to you, okay? Rule number four, I love drop off information, okay? I love drop off information. So we're getting back to you about your request for the blank. I'm the local food underwriter, and I'll be out in your area on Friday. Should I drop this information off in the morning or in the afternoon? Right? I, that's why I also love the either or as well. Drop off information, and I love either or. Get them to make a decision. Dropping off information, what's amazing about that is about nine out of 10 of them actually forget that you were ever dropping anything off anyway. You say, well, Cody, what am I dropping off? Most forget. Even if they do remember, you can drop off a card, you can drop off quotes, you can drop off you, you, you can drop off your brain full of knowledge, or, or after, or you can drop off yourself on their freaking couch and then 60 minutes later, you're doing business together, right? You can do whatever you want. However, dropping information off, because the goal is to set appointments. It's easier to set appointments when you say that you're dropping something off versus if you said, I would like to set an appointment for this time. 
Can I spend an hour with you? Can we sit down together at your table forever, right? Two hours sound good? I'll be out in your area on Friday. Should I drop it off in the morning or afternoon? Simple. Okay, moving on. Okay, rule number five is I always finish with a question. 100% of the time. That's one of the things when I'm calling leads, I believe that you should be finishing with a question always. That's a powerful opinion of mine that's correct. Anytime I speak on the phone, I finish with a question. Okay, the only time, the only time, okay, taking us to rule number six, the only, because I don't believe in pausing, but the only time I will pause is if I just ask a question, right? Most insurance agents say, hey, you responded to talk about this, and then they pause. That's how you lose control immediately, okay? That's why I always finish a question, and I only pause if I, after I finish with a question. Otherwise, I never pause. The pause, the pause is the death of the call. It's the absolute killer of freaking phone calls. Pause and watch what happens. When you pause, you're showing a lack of confidence, you were saying, I don't know what to say. You're saying, I don't know what to do. And you're also saying, you're also saying, hey, Betty, please say something that, that dumb that you don't mean that, that would object to anything I'm saying right now. You're like, please insert an, I don't have confidence, Betty. Please insert an objection here, right now, please. Okay, so that's why I never pause, right? I mean, I, I believe in keeping it simple. I believe in it as being a path. I believe in following a script. And I believe in never, ever pausing Unless you ask a question, then you can pause, okay? It shows a lack of confidence, control, and you're begging for an objection. Rule number seven is I believe in always, always, rule number one of sales, always, always, always agree. We are trained, it's human nature to be combative, to be disagreeable, to attack them, to confront them, when in reality we should be in a state of agreement always. Right? I hate your guts. I'm with you. Right? Most people do until they get to know me. I'm not interested. I understand. Most people are not. Right? Be agreeable. Be agreeable. That's why we teach the three A's to overcoming objections, which we will talk about in a different video if we haven't already, is agree, answer, and ask. When you get an objection, agree, answer, and ask. Right? Asking a question puts you back in control. So always be agreeable. I don't care what they say. I don't care if they, I don't care if they say, say, I didn't do it. Right? I'm with you. It's easy to forget. You put your, your date of birth as this. I'm assuming that that helps you remember that you did do it, right? Agree, answer, and ask. Always, 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 always agree, okay? And rule number eight, don't say. We've got new salespeople down there. I caught one of them saying this earlier, and I'm like, dude, you do not care how they're doing. You do not know them yet, okay? Nobody cares. What's, what's the number one thing a telemarketer always starts a call with? How are you doing today? Right? Do you want to be a telemarketer? No. You want to gain, keep control of the call? Yes. How are you? I'm doing horrible. Why are you calling me? Right? I didn't do it. I, I'm not interested. What do you mean you're not interested? I, I, said, I said, how are you? Right? So don't even say, how are you? Keep control of the call and set appointments. Nothing else matters. You can figure out how they're doing. You can think about them. You can talk to them. You can get to know them once you actually sit down. Okay. So think about this. If, hypothetically, you were to assume the right person answers the phone. Hello, buddy. You were to say your first name. This is Cody. You were to say, we're getting back to you. You were to, you were to give an either or and actually offer to drop the information off. You were to always finish the question. You were to never pause. You were always agreeing and you never said, how are you? Would you set more appointments, yes or no? Absolutely, emphatically, yes, you would. 92% of insurance agents fail. Most are horrible on the phone. They don't know what they're doing. And these are my eight rules for calling insurance leads. So from now on, remember, when you make one of these mistakes, and you're probably making multiple today, right now, just a minute ago, or you will in the future, unless you actually start to adopt these, if you want to have success calling insurance leads, you will implement these into your business and your practice right away. Should you cold call? I don't love cold calling anymore, but you may, a lot of people say, hey, I'm, I'm broke. I don't know what to do. I have no money. I want to be successful. I want to walk you through real quick what I did as a brand new agent to earn six figures from cold calling. Okay. So 
And, and I, I still train and teach agents all the time about, hey, you know what? You should, if you're in the PNC business, maybe it's a good way to generate leads. Okay, so one thing I did is I would do call nights every Monday night, okay? Mondays from 5.30 to 8.30, I would get three to five college kids, okay? I would get three to five college kids and I would give them a script, I'd give them a cubicle, no chair, you have to do well before you get a seat, okay? Maybe I'd give them a chair. Um, I would also give them some cash. I'd give them $10 per appointment for the first two appointments, okay? And then after that, I would do $20 plus. I would also buy them um, pizza. I'd give them some, a data list and a phone. And we would be calling set up appointments for final expense insurance. And so we would do this and I would walk out of these call nights. I would motivate them, I'd get excited. I would call with them because you need to lead by example. You don't hire people to do your job just because you don't want to do it. You do things you don't want to do because that's what success people do, okay? If you're, not, if, you're, if you're avoiding doing things you know you should do, stop. <laughs> you're never gonna succeed. It's impossible, it just is, okay? So I'd buy them pizza, we'd get excited, we'd call, and I would walk out of there, these Monday night call nights, sessions, cold calling, reading a script, you know, about final expense, a lot of the similar to the scripts that I read when I do my live cold calling shows. And I would walk out of there with eight, 12, 16, sometimes even 20 appointments, and my entire week would be booked. Now, about 50 to 60% of those appointments would no-show, simply because they're cold calls and they're not the best way. But if you wanna like, Find unique ways to get in front of people. Maybe you don't want to buy leads. Maybe you don't have the budget for 1500 bucks a month for marketing that we do. Maybe you don't want to work your own market or you're exhausted or you're scared. I don't know. Let's keep it real, right? Um, or whatever. Maybe you're struggling. You have zero money. You got to do something. Well, couple, one idea is this. Okay. That's an idea. I'm not saying it's the best idea. Okay. But that's a good idea. I'm going to shoot another video later. I'm thinking about another idea to do the exact same thing. So this is one idea. If you're like, hey, I'm broke, I need to make some money. This is what I did. And I was booking so many appointments. I was also adding in some warm market. I was adding in some door knocking. But dude, I made $117,361.13 in eight months as a brand new agent, broke, couldn't spell the word insurance, no sales experience, didn't know anything about products. I was probably, I, I was you, watching right now if you're struggling with no money and, and you're new. That was me. So this is possible for you if you put together a plan and go freaking execute. Hey, welcome back to Phone Phenom. I'm Cody Askins and today we're gonna talk about a new cold calling script that works really well door to door or over the phone. All right, so one of the things that I always talk about is how when you are cold calling, whether that is door to door, we're gonna go over some specific numbers. I'm gonna give you the script, everything, here in about the next 10 minutes or so, so stay with me, okay? Whether it's via door or whether it's via phone, this is all a numbers game, which is why we're gonna actually walk through specific numbers on this video, because I'm a big believer in that, okay? So let's just say, because w w when I go out, I think you need to be doing 25 to 50 door knocks per day when you go door to door using this script, okay? And it's a good one, all right? I've said a lot of appointments door to door or over the phone or got in immediately by using the script that I'm gonna give you, okay? So I wanna start out by saying that if you're door knocking like individual homes, okay? Individual homes, you may only be able to get in 25 because you gotta drive different homes. Or if you're door knocking homes that are right in a row, or if you're door knocking uh, specific like senior type complexes, then you could door knock as many as 50 doors in a day. I have a insurance buddy that used to door knock a lot of T65, turn in 65 for Medicare, Medicare supplements. And every time he went out and door knocked at least 25 doors in a day, he would make a sell from that trip of 25 door knocks where he was bringing information and try to help someone that's turning 65 with their Medicare. Now, it doesn't mean that he made a sell that day, but he always end up getting a follow-up or getting in a home or setting an appointment or making a sale right then 
from every 25 doors that he did. So if you're selling Medicare, you may want to think about that because he did that and it worked really well. I also did it years ago and it worked really well as well. I got to where I was writing 20 to 30 Medicare supplements every month from literally door knocking and cold calling without sending out information or leads, okay? If you're door knocking 50 doors, if they're in a row or if they're in a senior complex, then you're able to do that. I went out with a couple other guys one Friday and we spent, this has been years ago, this has probably been nine years ago, and we spent from about one o'clock till about, or probably about noon to one, somewhere in there, till about almost 10 o'clock at night, door knocking. We got through about 150 doors between the three of us and we wrote six life insurance policies that day from cold door knocking because they were all in a row. It was a complex, 125, 100 to 125 units, left, went to another complex. And these, these, these that I'm talking about are, uh, they call them like senior, senior living areas or senior apartments or um, senior housing. A lot of smaller cities have these senior housing complex where it's like a building and they got four units to that building. It's all one level, et cetera, okay? So that's where the numbers comes in of how you can do this, all right? So let's get to the actual script of what I've done and why this new cold calling script works so well, okay? Whether it's door to door or over the phone. The script is literally when you are knocking on someone's door, Okay, I like to say, hey, I'm Cody, how are you, right? And they say, well, you know, I'm great. Well, what are you doing here? Hey, I'm here to drop off the new state approved final expense information that we've helped a lot of your neighbors with. Did we get this to you yet? Right, so I like to ask the question and gain control. So by doing that and talking about the new state approved, and it is approved by the state, okay, final expense information, and you could do it for anything, any product, doesn't matter. Then you need to ask a question, which is, hey, did we get you this information to you yet? And they say, well, no, actually, I don't think you have. Okay, great, I'm here now, I've got the information with me, it just takes me a couple minutes to go over it, can I come in for a quick second, okay? And by doing that, and repeating that, and replicating that, and trying to get in the home, or trying to, I've actually done some live cold calling literally live cold calling where you can hear me and the customer and I've done live legit cold calling live on video before over the last several years. I've done it multiple times and I've used this script before and it works really well and I want to bring it back because it's something that can and will get you results if you use it properly, if you don't suck and if you use it often, okay? So I always talk about how I think that numbers is really important. So I'm actually give you some numbers behind what I'm saying and what I would notice. Okay, so when I would go out and I would door knock at least 150 to 250 doors in a week, here's the results that I would have, because I'm sure you're very curious, right? Okay, good. I would get, be able to actually speak, they would answer the door, 30 to 50 people, about 20%, okay, would actually answer the door. Of those, of those, I would typically get about a third, about 33%, that would actually let me in the door, okay? Which by that would be anywhere from 10 to about 15, okay? And then from there, I would typically end up with about a 30% close rate, which ends up being about three to five sales. And I could literally go out like clockwork, make about five sales a week, about a sale every single day by cold door knocking. And I know you can too. There's a lot of agents that are struggling. About 92% of insurance agents fail. There's more millionaires in this industry than any other industry in the world. Most people don't know those things. But the reason so many people are failing is we don't get in front of enough people. We don't ask people to buy. We don't talk to enough people. We don't sit with enough people. And when you don't sit with enough people, I don't care how talented or untalented you are. If you don't sit with people and ask them to do business with you, you will not end up making sales. We don't make sales, you don't make money. We don't make money, you quit, you fail, you end up out of the business. If you don't have a lot of money and you're brand new, door knocking and cold calling, whether it's, whether it's actual cold or whether it's aged leads, which we have a ton of here at Secure Agent Leads, a little plug real quick, okay, is because they don't get in front of enough people. This is a very inexpensive way to do that, and I'm teaching it to you now because this is a lot of what I used to do. When I made 117K in my first eight months in the business, brand new agent, 20 years old, I did it from cold calling, 
cold door knocking and work in my warm market, which is what we teach in Prospecting 101, is the different ways to get in front of people so you can create a system, which is why I'm writing the book right now, Six Figure Sell System. Okay, so those are the numbers. Now I want to jump into if you're do if if you're actually going and, and using it on the phone because this is phone phenom and we said that you could do this, okay, over the phone or door to door. When you move into the actual phone piece of it, when I'm door knocking, I will say how are you. When I'm on the phone, I don't. Okay, let me make that very clear. Okay, also I like. I like to be in control, whether I'm at the door, which is why I always finish with a question every single time, whether I'm at the door or whether I'm on the phone. I like to finish with a question every single time. And you're going to get objections. I'm busy, I don't have time, whatever. Okay, I, you can overcome those objections by using these three A's. Okay, agree, answer, and ask. Agree, answer, and ask. I, you know what? I've, 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 I, don't, I don't have much time. I'm very busy. Excellent. Let's do this. You can set a stopwatch for 60 seconds. If I'm not done in 60 seconds, you can kick me out. Okay? Is that fair enough? Perfect. We'd like to sit at the couch or the table. Right? Do whatever you can, but be in an agreeable state. Answer the objection, and then ask, which gets you psychologically back in control. Okay? So I want you to think about that aspect. Also, when you're making calls, I like to say the person's name. I don't like to ask them. We are trained. Human nature is, is this Betty? You know it's Betty. You want me to answer the phone? The, the, you know, the cold call list says Betty. Betty. Great. Hey, this is Cody. Hey, getting back to you about the new state approved final expense information. Hey, did we get you this information yet? That's the script. Okay. Very simple. That is the script, whether it's on the phone or door to door. The, the, the whole, the whole trick behind all this is, if there's a trick, is to get in front of enough people to succeed. Most agents don't. They fail because they do not get in front of people. And I want to challenge you right now to get in front of people every single week. I teach a system called the Triple S Weekly System. Set, sit, and sell. I believe that if, that if you're working the phone, that you should set 15 appointments, sit with 10, and sell five every single week. That's what you do. And if you have a lower closing rate, maybe you sell three. But at three and 150 policies a year, you're not going to fail. Most people fail. And I want to challenge you to think outside the box. So this is why I'm giving you the new cold calling script that works so well for me, whether it's door to door or over the phone. The top five reasons why agents call leads incorrectly most agents that I ever talk to, that I ever hear from, that even buy our leads are doing it wrong. And I'm going to take some time today to show you the top five reasons of why you're doing things wrong. The top five things that agents do wrong, that you're probably doing wrong, that we need to spend a little time together, probably about 12, 15 minutes together, so that we can tell, show you what you're doing wrong so that moving forward, you can fix it. The number one reason why agents are calling leads incorrectly. I, I think if, if I, I had to rank these earlier today, Dylan and I sat down, we always prep for the show some, most of the time. Number one reason, agents try to get too much information. Agents try to, when you're calling leads, you generally, what happens is you generally try to quote them, give them quotes, give them prices, ask what they can afford, Ask if they already have anything. Ask their interest level. Ask, ask about their health, if they smoke, height and weight. You ask too much. It does not matter and it is irrelevant because the goal is to sit down with the prospect. Something I'm going to go over in a little bit. You gotta, the goal is to sit down with the prospect. But agents are used to giving way too much information. And if that's the goal, then hey, let's sit down with the prospect. Then. Do whatever it takes to sit down with the prospect without complicating it or making it complex or confusing them. An agent wrote in the other day and said, hey, dude, I, you know, some of the leads that I call, they think it's free. I don't typically hear that because of the way that I work my script and the things that I say. These are the five things that agents are doing in from the thing that they're doing most wrong, that's most important not to do, all the way down to least important. So that's number one, too much information. It's irrelevant. Don't get it. It's too much. Stick to the script. Person answers the phone. John, 
Hey, this is Cody getting back to you about the new state regulated final expense information. Hey, I'm the local field underwriter. I've been assigned to your area and I'll be in your area on Friday. Should I drop this information off? What do you think? In the morning or in the afternoon? Where in that did I ask about their health? Where in that did I ask if they already had anything? Where in that did I ask how much they could afford? Where in that did I ask anything other than when I can drop something off? Nothing because it's irrelevant. And if you're doing that and your manager's telling you to do that, then stop and make sure I talk to your manager because I'm going to set that straight. That's number one. Number two reason that you're calling leads incorrectly is that you're not finishing with a question, especially over the phone. I do not believe in saying anything unless I finish with a question. I don't believe in speaking over the phone unless I finish with a question. I know that's rough. I know that's hard. I know for agents that are used to just blabbing everywhere and puking on people, I know that's difficult to comprehend. I need to keep things concise and finish with questions. I'm telling you, it works. It works for me. It's worked for others. It will work for you too. You do not say anything over the phone without finishing with a question because this keeps you in control every step of the way. At the end of the day, the goal all these things align with the goal. The goal is to sit down with someone. The goal is to sit with them. The goal is not even to make a sale. The goal is to sit with them and hopefully you'll make a sale, but at least you had the opportunity and you can't get opportunities if you don't sit with them. That's reason number two, you don't finish with a question. Start to finish with a question every single time. All right, reason number three, this one's big. This one's pretty common. Agents pause at the wrong times. They pause without asking a question. Instead, what you should be doing, because I'll give you a perfect example. You call a prospect and 95% and of you that are watching right now are making this mistake. Hey, this is John Smith with uh, the insurance group. Hey, you looks like you went online and, and said uh, that you wanted a quote for life insurance. And then you pause. And by doing that, the only thing that you are doing, and you're making the mistake right now, we're going to fix it. But, what, but when you do that and you say that phrase, and that's what you all say because you don't know what to do. And that's my fault. I'll, I'll take blame. When that happens, though, what's going on is you are saying, Miss, Miss Betty, Mr. John, prospect, please insert an objection right here, right now, please. Go ahead. You insert the objection. I'll wait. I'll hold. It's insane. It's ridiculous. And I don't want you doing it anymore. Man, I used to do it too. First few years of my career, I didn't understand all this stuff. I really didn't. It took me till, uh, honestly, I probably didn't even understand all this stuff until I started generating leads for people. And then I started calling them and practicing and working it and making it and perfecting a system that works for people so that not only could I give leads to agents, but I could also tell them, I could give them leads and tell them what to do that works. And then believe it or not, if you have leads and you have something that actually works and you put the two together, guess what? You sit with people, you have success and you make money. So that's why we do these things. Number three was Paul's gosh. I don't pause just to make it, keep it simple so that I can like break this down. I don't pause unless I, until after, after I ask a question, that's it. Number four, reason number four, you guys ready? You ready for number four? Number four is pretty big too. And you don't even know that number four exists probably. I would say 99% of insurance agents do this one wrong. This one's big. Number four is a poor intro agents have a poor intro. What does that mean? That means that you don't take command of the call. And I'm going to say this. One thing that immediately happens is the person says, hello, and you, the agent, what do you say? I'll give you a few examples. Is this Betty Smith? Hello, I'm looking for Betty. Hi, I'm, I'm looks like I looks like I'm looking for Betty. Hi, I'm supposed to ask for Betty. Hey, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I need Betty Smith, please. All of these things that let you, that, that, and what that does is 
you are telling the prospect that you do not know who they are and you're not even sure that you're calling the right person right now. It's a mistake and, it, and it's a bad mistake because it's so early in the call that the rest of the call, you can still set appointments, but it makes the rest of the call tougher. It's an uphill sled. Instead, you say, well, Cody, that's what I've been trained to do. That's all I ever do. What should I do? We'll just say that Betty answers the phone. Hello? Maybe in a more female voice than that, but they say hello. You say, Betty. It's confident, you know that it's them, and you just say their first name. And you, then you're in control, and you get the call started the way you want to get it started. Because, and you say, well, dude, what, what if it's, what if, you know, the lead says Betty Smith and the hus husband answers? Mr. Smith. That's it. Mr. Smith. And then if you need to ask for Betty, that's fine, but I'm going to roll with it. The poor, poor intro is number four. You guys ready for number five? Number five is, number five is something that I would say this is the one that I've generally always done pretty well, which is selling a drop-off time. If the goal is to get in front of someone and selling a drop-off time is going to make it easiest for you to do that, then sell a drop-off time. I get a lot of agents to say, well, dude, you're selling a drop-off time, and then you get to the home, and the prospect, what are they going to say? I thought you were dropping it off. Like, like, what do you say or what do you do when you get to the home? They forget. They don't remember everything you say. They forget that you were ever dropping something off. If you say, well, what information would you drop off? Dude, I would drop off me. I am the information, and I'm going to provide the information to them and leave it with them if that's what they need. But at the end of the day, the goal is to sit with a prospect and selling a drop-off time is the best way to do it. If you're not doing it, you're making a mistake. Sell a drop-off time. For instance, I just said it earlier. This is Cody. I'm getting back to you about the new final expense information. Now, John, I'm the local field underwriter. I've been assigned to your case. I'll be out in your area on Friday. Should I drop this information off? Should I drop this information off in the morning or in the afternoon. That's it. And about 80% of the time, they're going to pick one. And then you're going to say, they're going to say afternoon, and you're going to say, great, uh, let me look at my calendar. Okay, it looks like I have a 2 o'clock or a 4 o'clock. Which is better? And, and, and anybody can do this. You can say this exact same thing. Most people just don't because we're lazy. We don't know what to do. We've been taught to do all these things incorrectly. So I'm going to run through those again real quick one more time. Number one, you try to get too much information. Jeez. Number two, you don't finish with a question. Number three, you pause at the wrong times. Don't pause unless you ask a question. Number four, it's a poor intro. You start the, I mean, the, the whole call is shot. And number five, you don't sell a drop-off time. If the goal is to sit down with the prospect, let's, let, let's, do it. let's play a little game real quick. If the goal is to sit down with the prospect, does giving them too, too much information make it harder for you to sit down with them? Yes. Does not finishing with a question make it harder for you to sit down with them? Yes. Does pausing at the wrong times make it harder for you to sit down with them? Yes. Does starting poorly with an in, poor intro make it harder for you to sit down with them? Yes. Does not selling a drop-off time make it harder for you to sit down with them? Yes, then don't, don't do them. If the goal is to sit down with them and these things will get you in front of them, then do them and implement them into your calls. Because at the end of the day, the only reason we do all of this is to help you, the audience watching, the agents that are doing great, struggling, making 18 grand in a year, making 48 grand in a year, making 92 grand in a year, making 260 grand in a year, making 782 grand in a year, or $12 million a year. The reason we do what we do is to help insurance agents be great at getting in front of people. And the goal is to sit down with them. These things make it easier for you to sit down with them if you do the opposite. If you don't do these things incorrectly and you actually do them correctly, if you haven't tried our leads, you need and want to give them a try. We've got testimonials galore. 
I'm talking videos and pictures to prove it. Unreal, some stats to help you out. If, you, if you're like, I don't know if I want to try your leads. Well, here's five things that may help. We've helped over 10,000 insurance agents. We've generated over 1 million leads. The average appointment set ratio is 43%. The average closing rate is 21%. And the average inbound call percentage from our leads is about 14%. So if those align, and if you'd like to see those numbers, or even better, then I encourage you to call our leads. The best way to do that is to call in 833-40-AGENT. It's on the screen right now. 833-402-4368, 833-40-AGENT. I'm doing Christmas deals that you'll want to hear about, but you got to call in to find out because this video will live online forever. And if I say, hey, we're giving you, you buy 50 and we're going to give you like 25 or 30 leads for free, then people are going to expect that later. So I'm not going to say that, but if you call, call in, you may hear something similar. Just kind of a FYI. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Most people in the industry fail. They, don't show up. they just don't show up. You know, like it literally, like in college, I had to show up to class to pass the class. It wasn't hard, it wasn't rocket science. If I showed up, I, I won. In, in